Hey, welcome. I'm John Waters, co-founder E3 Aviation. Today, we are going to talk about stress. We're going to talk about stress in the cockpit. Now, this is something that people have PhDs for. I don't have a PhD in it. I'm just going to talk about some of my experiences of how to manage stress in the cockpit or scenarios where I have encountered stress in the cockpit that maybe you can take away and apply to a situation you will undoubtedly find yourself in at some point if you continue down the path of aviation. But stress in the cockpit, it is something that will always be there, whether you're the most seasoned pilot in the world or you're just starting out. It could be for the seasoned pilot. It could be weather. It could be aircraft malfunctions, just like it could be for a new pilot. Maybe you're trying to get your family down to the beach or something. You know, uh, it, These can vary just depending upon where you are in the world. But nonetheless, stress will always be there. Everyone will always have check rides. These are things that exist. Now, my background coming from the F-16 world, I would say preparing me fairly well for stressful situations. The most stressful situations I encountered in the F-16 were really bad weather days with heavyweight landings and poor visibility with bad braking, including brake failures, to troops in contact who absolutely need your ordinance on target as quickly as humanly possible so that they don't get killed. That is a very stressful situation. How did I manage? What are some things that I did in those F-16 scenarios? Well, I can say, fortunately, it fell back on my training, right? Establishing a solid training plan is huge. Now, maybe you're going through a private pilot syllabus, right? You're going to do your, your, normal, your normal flights. Well, outside of that syllabus, putting yourself mentally as you sit and drink coffee of, hey, what would I do if this happened? My engine failed right after takeoff. Hey, what would I do if I'm flying down the beach and my engine failed? What would I do if I somehow I end up VFR and now I'm VFR on top of the weather and I wasn't anticipating that the cloud deck built up below me and I can't get back? Do I turn around? Do I talk to ATC? What do I do? Putting yourself in those scenarios is equivalent and it is your cheap simulator, if you will, that I had available to me in the F-16, right? So F-16, I'm gonna be doing simulator training, I'm gonna be doing actual spin-up rides, combat prep rides, working with JTACs and things like that. It still doesn't de-escalate the stress and the heart rate in the moment, but you fall back onto that training. You're not trying to figure it out at that moment. So thinking about the bad things that can happen before they happen to you is a great way to help manage that stress as you go through. Because what happens, you know, if you get in, put in this real stressful scenario, the worst thing would be to not make a decision. Ultimately, like you just got to make a decision when it comes to aviation. You know, do you lower the nose? Do you turn for the runway? Do you turn for the road? Do you turn for the field? What, what do you do? That stress can lead to indecision. And indecision is what kills. So thinking about the bad things ahead of time is a great way to kind of help manage and mitigate that stress knowing that you're going to have stress when you go out on a flight. Now, as you mission plan, as you prep for your flight, there is a perfect time to identify the stressors for that day. You'll hear about CRM or ORM, operational risk management. Everyone got a different flavor of what they call it. But when going out there, what's the weather today? Is there runway closure? Are there any notams? Is there a TFR out there? What are some of the things, what are the threats out there that could induce threats and impact my flight? By thinking and planning for those ahead of time, you're minimizing the surprises that go out there. Because the last thing we want to be in aviation is surprise. Surprise is never a good thing. So think about the things before you go out there. Think about the things that could go south when you're, again, you're sitting there having a cup of coffee in the morning and you're not on the flying schedule or you don't have a flight that week. You can also learn from others. Like YouTube is a great resource. Hopefully we'll have some great resources that you enjoy here as well. But there's so much content out there where you can go learn from other people's mistakes. But rather than just sit there and think about like, oh, or say like, ah, I would never do that. What an idiot. I don't know. Maybe, maybe put yourself in that scenario. That's one of the things that I've learned in my aviation career. It's for those of have and those who will. So at some point it's going to happen to you. If you're prepared for it, hopefully you're able to mitigate and capture the error where it doesn't create an unrecoverable event. But I've had very experienced buddies who have rejoined on cell phone towers at night. You're like, how is that even possible? Well, throw some MVGs on with no depth perception. 
And when the stars look like cell phone towers and planes look like cell phone towers, it can happen. And those are the type of things that people don't anticipate. That's pretty dramatic, right? You're probably not going to be thrown on NVGs when you're out there flying in your 172. But you'll have check rides. Check ride. That's a stressful thing, right? I can't tell you how many check rides I've had in this this point in my life. I, I hate check rides. I think every pilot hates check rides. But they don't stress me out now. I just fly the sortie the way I would always fly it. I always fly like there is a, a check airman behind me watching or there's an evaluator on my wing. I'm not going to do anything different than I would normally do airborne. If I make a mistake, because guess what? You're going to make a mistake every single flight. I make a mistake every single flight. Identifying that mistake, capturing it as early as possible, and rectifying it is the way to win. Sometimes they're recoverable one is a check ride. Sometimes it's not. You'll take your hits. You'll move on. But when it comes to stress in the cockpit, this is something that's going to happen. So you just tell yourself, go out the gate. There are stressors out there. Identify them as early as possible so that you can mitigate them in flight and you're not caught by them. Let's say you're caught by them in flight. This is one of those things where the compartmentalization piece is huge when it comes to aviation. So if you get surprised by something, uh, call it an engine failure. Well, there's not a whole lot of time to think about it. You just got to put your critical action procedures into effect and land the plane, right? Like it's kind of a yes, no uh, type scenario there. But maybe you find yourself above the weather and you didn't anticipate that. Well, what tools do you have? So you go back on the aviate, navigate, communicate. Well, I got to aviate first. So don't crash the plane. Is the plane going to crash if, let's say, you're a private pilot, not instrument rated, and you end up somehow trapped above the weather? Nope. Plane's going to keep flying. Maybe say you're in IMC. Is the plane going to keep flying? Yeah, so long as you get on the ADI, keep your wings level and do that. What's well, probably something you need to do next? Well, you probably need to use the radio. So that aviate, navigate, communicate, you're aviating, you're navigating, holding wings level, flying, you're heading, and then you need to start talking to an air traffic controller and see what options you have available. Maybe they can help. You need to declare an emergency. You need to get a, a letdown. Use your VFR procedures of just nice, slow descent. Again, it might depend. That's down in the weeds, right? But that would be a very stressful thing to find yourself in. Figure out what tools you have available so that you can, again, safely fly the plane and get it back to where it needs to go. Compartmentalize the bad thing. Deal with that when you get on the ground and you're at 1G and zero knots. Hopefully this helps. Again, people have PhDs in stress management, breathing techniques and stuff like that. Probably it's not going to be a great thing when you're flying around in an airplane. You need to think about it beforehand as best you can to prepare yourself that when those things pop up, you're not completely caught off guard. And if you are completely caught off guard, aviate, navigate, communicate, and you'll probably be all right. All right, until next time.